76 is the formation of ozone, which is O3 gas, from oxygen, which is O2 gas, spontaneous at room temperature under standard state conditions. Okay. So looks like they're describing a type of que- uh, you know, equation here, right? We're forming ozone from oxygen. So let's just write out that equation. If I'm forming something, I know that I have to yield and put whatever I'm trying to form on the product side. So I know that the O3 is going to go on the product side. And what am I forming? it? Well, I'm forming ozone from oxygen. The O2 has to go on the left. They didn't say anything else, so I'm assuming that that's the only things I got. But remember, with any equation, you got to make sure that it's balanced. So I have two oxygens here. I have three oxygens here. I can just multiply them by the other number, right? The next number that they have in common is six. Two times three is six, and three times two is six. Okay. Now we want to find out if this reaction is spontaneous. Spontaneous always comes from a delta G value. So in essence, we're solving for a delta G. Now they're telling us that we're at standard state uh, conditions, right? So that means that I'm solving for a delta G notch. And if we're using standard state conditions, that means that I can go in the back of the textbook to find out what those delta G values are for each individual component. And that's exactly what I did. So let's just drag these up. The delta G value for the O2 is 205.2, and the delta G value for the O3 is 163.2. And because of that, I can actually, whoa, what happened there? Hold on. If we want to, we can kind of just make this a little bit nicer. These are your delta G values, and now let's throw everything else out. Okay, beautiful. Now, keep in mind, if we're only using delta G values, what formula is it? Well, there's only one formula that we can use in which we're going to use product delta G values and reactant delta G values. It's this equation right here, okay? So delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rx sentence reaction, equals the sum, that's what this little squiggly thing means, sum, aka addition. So we're going to add up all the delta Gs of the products and subtract them from the sum of all the delta G of the reactants. But now here's the thing, are these values going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, it all depends on the balanced equation. That's why we had to write it, right? These values are for only one of the substance. But for oxygen's case, I have three of them as my coefficient. And for the ozone, I have two. So whatever your coefficient is, that's the number that you're going to multiply by. So I have to multiply this one by three, and I have to multiply this one by two. So let's do that first. Calcy time, three times 205.2. I get 615.6, and for my O3, I have two times 163.2, and that is 326.4. There's nothing to add on either side because I don't have any other substances. So these are your final numbers that we're going to plug them into the equation, right? Products minus reactants. So delta G for the whole entire reaction equals 326.4 minus uh, the 615. 0.6. Delta G for the reaction equals, I could just grab the numbers, that's why I love Calci, right? Minus, and I'm gonna grab it, I press this up button, grab that number, press en enter, look at that. And I get a negative 289.2. Just know that when you're doing it this way, the delta G for reactions are always in kilojoules. Your delta G formation is in kilojoules per mole, 
But since we're multiplying by your coefficients, those are mole values. So the moles cancel out and you're just left with kilojoules. Okay, so this is technically your answer. Now, is this spontaneous? Well, remember, a delta G that is negative is always a spontaneous reaction. This means that you do not any extra external energy from an outside source to get this going. It's just going to happen spontaneously, right? If someone's spontaneous, they just do things on a whim. Woohoo! I'm not spontaneous. <laughs> but anyway, I used to be. I used to be back in my college days. But now I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was a wreck. But anyway, now I'm doing chem videos for you guys. So, del delta G being a negative is spontaneous. And that's what we have here. We have a negative value. So this reaction is, yes, definitely spontaneous. That means that there's no additional external energy coming from an outside source that needs to get this reaction going. And that's it. That's the answer. What do you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers. It's absolutely incredible. And it's all because of you guys. I'm so glad that you guys value education and learning is fun. Yeah, I think so. What do you think? I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.